Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am pleased to rise today to speak on the Liberal Opposition Day motion regarding our premium exemption plan. And I will be sharing my time with the member from Vancouver Centre. As my community, Etobicoke North, and indeed all Canadians, deserve a plan for jobs and growth. Unfortunately, the Conservatives' EI plan provides neither. Mr. Speaker, I have the privilege of serving a wonderful community. It's the place where I'm born and raised. While well, Etobicoke North is proudly one of the most diverse ridings in the country, our constituents face challenges of family reunification, language barriers, a lack of jobs, and that's particularly for our youth. Mr. Speaker, students' tuition, food, rent, transit, and other costs have all been going up, yet student debt levels remain constant. The average post-secondary graduate carries $28,000 in debt. The unemployment and underemployment rates for youth have long-term consequences because it takes years to repay their debt. Parents and grandparents often step up to financially support their, ch their adult children. This is scarring a generation of young Canadians and contributing to higher household debt and poor retirement savings. Mr. Speaker, let me share some stories from the summer in my constituency office. I have permission to share each in the House of Commons. In fact, one of my constituents said, quote, tell my story. I'm a person. I need a job. I have a family to feed. Make them care. Make them do something that actually helps and doesn't hurt my family or me. From my community, an international doctor who cannot practice medicine, bringing the total of dozens and dozens of international medical graduates I have met. A man previously had his own law firm back home for almost two decades, came to Canada for a better life for his children, repeated his law education in Canada, and still cannot find a job. A countless number of students, parents, and even grandparents who came looking for summer jobs so they and their family could pay their fall tuition, and an equally high number of college and university graduates who had been out of work for one, two, and three years. Mr. Speaker, a woman who had a good paying job for 20 years lost her job to outsourcing. After months without work, she was living out of her car, afraid to go to sleep at night, and unable to pay for her life-saving drugs. We called her specialist and explained the problem. Paid her gas money so she could drive to the doctor, and she was able to pick up sample medication. Another woman could not afford the painkillers after her surgery. She came to my office in tears with an ice pack to kill the pain, so I bought her medication and paid for her trips to and from the hospital. Mr. Speaker, I am tired of hearing the government's rhetoric about jobs. It is time for the government to take unemployment, and particularly youth unemployment, seriously and provide meaningful support to Canadians who are struggling. I was in my constituency office almost daily this summer, and almost 80% of those who came to see me needed a job. Because of unemployment, they also needed clothing, food, and other supports and we helped them find jobs and got them the supports they needed. Just last week, I spent six hours in the community with business leaders as part of a program to create jobs in Etobicoke North. Mr. Speaker, Etobicoke North residents and all Canadians deserve a plan for jobs and growth. Unfortunately, the Conservatives' EI plan provides neither. The Liberals' EI premium exemption plan will reward businesses for each new job created in 2015 and 2016. This would represent a benefit up to $1,280 for each newly created job, which for $225 million could help to create over 175,000 new jobs. On the other hand, the Conservatives' EI rate reduction only encourages businesses to, say, to stay small and punishes them if they grow and are successful. With the Conservatives' plan, only businesses with EI taxes below 15000 would see any savings. 
creating an incentive for businesses to fire workers. The price tag for the Conservatives' new small business EI tax credit is estimated at $550 million over two years. That is, the Conservatives have announced an annual $225 million measure that is unlikely to produce jobs. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives' EI tax credit is getting slammed by economists ranging from Jack Mintz to Mike Moffat. From Jack Mintz, University of Calgary, quote, it becomes a disincentive to growth. From Stephen Gordon, Laval University, quote, the Conservatives have yet again eschewed a straightforward and effective measure and adopted one that is complicated and most likely to have little effect on employment or wages. From David McDonald, Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives, quote, if you're an employer and your payroll is slightly over $550,000, you've got a strong incentive to cut your payroll. And from Mike Moffat, Mowat Centre, quote, the proposed small business job credit has major structural flaws that in many cases gives firms an incentive to fire workers and cut salaries. The Globe and Mail says that is, quote, creating a perverse disincentive for small companies to grow. The tax credit gives firms about $200 to hire someone, but over $2,200 to fire someone. Mr. Speaker, the Liberals have a solution. Use the money to give job creators an EI premium exemption for new jobs. I have heard from members of my community who want to know when the Conservatives will drop their poor plan and adopt the Liberal plan that would actually reward job creation and growth. Mr. Speaker, under the Conservatives, 527 mid-sized firms of 100 to 499 employees vanished between 2007 and 2010. Canada has a lack of medium and large companies compared to the United States and most other developed countries. And also under the Conservatives, 9,000 exporters disappeared between 2008 and 2012 and may never come back. Not only have jobs been lost, but also Statistics Canada does not know where job vacancies exist in communities across Canada. The Auditor General's 2014 Spring Report confirmed that the Conservatives' undermining of Statistics Canada has left the government unable to accurately address the economic needs of Canadian communities. Mr. Speaker, Liberals believe the government must not only create the right conditions for economic growth, but also ensure that growth is sustainable and finally help the struggling middle class. We understand that we must create the conditions that allow for economic prosperity, including investment in education, infrastructure and trade expansion. Liberal focus is creating new jobs and hiring more Canadians. This is the only way that we can grow the middle class and expand opportunities for Canadian families. Mr. Speaker, the people of Etobicoke North need jobs, and I have worked hard to get them jobs. I obtained funding for a Completing the Circle program, a $500,000 jobs program in our community in remembrance of Loyenne Jalau. I personally review and edit resumes late into the night, sometimes doing two and three drafts. We get our people into job programs. We follow up with them to make sure their job searches are going in the right direction. While they search, we help them with food, clothing, and whatever other supports they, have need, they might need. I buy medicine. I had a lady looking for help who was in agony due to an ear infection that had raged for three weeks. She had pus and blood running down her face. The sad reality is she could not afford antibiotics because she could not find a job. Mr. Speaker, in closing, a constituent asked of me, how come you have to find me a job? Why doesn't the government make it easier for me to get a job so I can pay taxes, contribute, and have my dignity? Thank you, Mr. Speaker.